Right. Um, okay, so this is to show you uh, that we've transplanted out our uh, diode matrix. You can see that there's no inputs and these aren't connected to the outputs. Okay, and what we've done is we've uh, I've got a just get that out of the way. I've got the uh, a scope on an LED and the LED is connected to uh, the the first output. You see. Okay. What's that doing in there? I'm not quite sure what that's doing in there. Oh that's the power supply input, yeah. Um, okay. So we've got a four four outputs obviously, which are on that's actually port B on the uh, on the Arduino and they are now controlling through uh, we've got five four sevens there and these are KSP ninety fours and then we've got our uh, eight N channel MOSFETs which are um, what are they? Two two oh threes. Yeah. They're all two two oh threes. These particular ones. Hundred watt MOSFETs actually. Um, so we've got the outputs and the inputs are coming from the sensors into our port, it's port D on the Arduino, right? And because they're grounding, I've got high pull up resistors which connect to the, I mean, I've got a bit of a bodge here, but basically it's through to the plus 5 volts, okay? So that gives us inputs and outputs, problem because I didn't understand the, uh, way, the way of reading a port, but we got that sorted. Uh, and so what's happening now is that we've got the inputs from the sensors going into the Arduino and then the outputs from the Arduino are controlling the uh, field coils. Uh -huh. And uh, so what we've done is we've put a program into there to basically just simply copy what this is doing. Which is, you know, it takes the input sensor and maps it to firing the particular channels of the outputs, the field control outputs. Okay. And that's the program it is, isn't it? Let me just check for an update. No updates. Right, so that's the program and it's pretty simple and this is obviously on the website. So we've got basically a table there of mapping inputs against outputs. Okay, so you've got your sensors on the left. That's the sensor input and it's inverted logic. And then in the outputs you've got the phase. Which is which field coils? Oh. Which sorry, which um, MOSFETs are fired to give you the fields? And then what we've got here is basically a, a loop which just simply detects which you, which input you're on and sets the appropriate output. So if it sees that, it puts that there, <laughs> you know, and that sort of thing. It's just a, a loop. And the loop, I mean, I put in the notes that its uh, sample period should be. Uh, should be um, shorter than 100 microseconds. It's probably much less. It's somewhere sort of 50 to 10 microseconds, fast enough so that it wouldn't really make a difference. It, it seems to slow. It's not running quite as fast as it would if it was connected directly. But other than that, it's fine. And what I've done is I've got an LED here, which is linked up to the first channel. So if I actually slow it down, you'll see that the LED will blink with the turn. Now that's on an output, okay, so that's actually seeing what the output is showing, okay, and we've got another one, it's on the Arduino board, which you can see also, that little LED there, which is blinking as I turn it, and it's kind of just to confirm that it is the Arduino, if I can get the camera properly on it, <laughs> it is the Arduino that's doing it, you can see, there's a little bit of a delay because of the, uh, I think this... Uh, it's a mobile phone camera. <laughs> it's, uh, there's a bit of a delay between the audio and the video. Yeah, but you can see that, and if I let it go, it'll then speed up so that it's just basically into a, a sort of partially on thing. Okay, so it obviously does run. Oh, we've got a little bit of a... since the oscillation. Now, this is the thing that happened when you had the original sensors on there, you see, and it used to just oscillate a bit. Okay. There we go, and you can hear the motor. And, as before, if I turn up the voltage, the motor speeds up, and I just put it on 6 volts because it's just a 
a sort of an average gives it enough torque to play with it so it's working and what we've done now is we've actually turned this hardware into software but crucially now that means that we can then control this we can actually add in uh, the PWM control and what we'll do is we'll take the inputs here we've got inputs these are analog inputs and we'll put a couple of potentiometers on those and then in the software we will map those to the mark and the space which means we can then control the mark and the space you see and I might just do a, a sort of stepper version first to see it do it and then I can actually link in the sensors so that we can control the mark and the space with the sensors to give us torque output so that's pretty good another thing I can show you there you can see if I slow it down there you go it's uh, varying the the uh, I think this is the mark so this this makes the mark faster and a little slower I just reduce that so you can see it all and then as you see slow down there we go yeah and obviously I can speed it up I'll just hold this correctly and then I can uh, do it quickly see see you see obviously there see and that's the actual output because it's linked onto this LED so when the LED's on that's on and uh, as you can see it just looks like a smooth transition now as I say it, it seems to I need to set that slightly higher to make this run at the same speed as it did I think I'll put it on four and a half there we go yeah it's going to slow right down now isn't it <laughs> there we go yeah so it needs probably about another couple of volts and bearing in mind we've got a resistor in there so really talking about a fraction of a volt really but it's running and it's working and that's the crucial thing so now what we can do is develop the software and we can make this thing work correctly we need two pots we need one for the mark and one for the space and also there may I may actually add in a different algorithm to start it going because at the moment it's um, it's marked space and you need to kind of nudge it because if it's actually not registering which hall effect it's at then it won't know where it is so to just nudge it along a bit and get the correct hall effect so that it picks up where the phase is and then it can then run you know you can because you can step it obviously you can just simply step the sequence and make it turn and you can remember where it was when it last stopped because obviously when you stopped it it will know which whole effect was the last one to kick so you can just simply start the stepping from the next one so it can do it intelligently but what you can do is instead of using the uh, PWM BLDC algorithm which I've developed uh, for the initial stages just to get the thing going you could just simply use PWM separate from the BLDC just simply so that you're increasing the torque and bringing the speed of the motor into play and then it can then use the uh, combined algorithm after that and uh, so we need to develop that basically but that's pretty good still a bit of a rat's nest we need to make some PCBs for all of this because it obviously works yeah so uh, yeah it's pretty good yeah so now we can start writing some code make it run which is cool